Shut up and sit down. Welcome back, Supercross 2. It's been a long time. Uh, I needed a break from MXGP 2019. So we are revisiting. We are on uh, round six, I think, of our 250 West career. Uh, man, I still haven't finished that. And we are at San Diego. Uh, so we are actually going to be giving these guys the board is up. a 20 second head start. Uh, I think that's probably not enough. They're pretty slow. Actually, you know what? Let's go 25. 25 seconds we're going to give them. Uh, they are really slow at San Diego, and we will see what we can do. Uh, we are sitting, I think, about seven points ahead in the leaderboards. Uh, oh, I got to go. Okay, 25 seconds, we said. Uh, in front of Plessinger in the championship. All right, let's go. Ooh, I just just made it before the tough locks came out. And I have to tell you, the physics on this uh, compared to MXGP 2019, uh, I like them a lot. <laughs> uh, the jumping, maybe, I think the whips, they actually did improve uh, in 2019 MXGP. Uh, at first, I didn't think they were any better, but yeah, I think they did improve the animation for them and the kind of uh, how fluid they kind of feel. Uh, this, though, the cornering is a lot better. Uh, you, I don't know how, I'm going to, I'm going to advance physics right now. And I can't, I can't break the rear tire loose. You have a lot of traction. Just yank it. Right, did take me a little bit longer to get up to these guys, but we have plenty of time. So guys, there is only, there is less, no, a little bit over three months until the first Supercross race of the year. So as you guys are watching this, uh, probably the designations is going on, uh, either qualifying or the race on Sunday. Uh, let me know who your pick is uh, for the win. Had to say, yeah, I mean, Hurlings, Koldenhoff, uh, and I don't, I don't know who their third rider is for the Netherlands, but uh, man, it's in their backyard. If they don't win it at Assen in the sand, uh, uh, man, I don't know. Have you been keeping up with Team Fried's, uh, Team Fried's oh, experiences in the Netherlands? Getting ready, getting ready for the designations. Been watching those pretty funny videos. Uh, last one I saw was uh, Jason Anderson. Uh, and those guys driving like three hours into Germany to go to Chipotle. I bet you Alvin Baker was just like, what the hell? He wanted, they, he was so far away. They're like, okay, Alvin can't prevent us from getting Chipotle. Just going to double. Keep it safe. Oh, somebody's coming in on us. Oh, this could be, okay. Whew. Oh, this set of whoops is tough getting a good drive and getting getting up on top of them. Right, I want to ask you guys something. Uh, on Twitter, I saw a post by uh, Cole Seeley. So Cole Seeley ran the number 14. Uh, when he came in to get that number, he asked Kevin Windham if it was okay if he if he used the 14. And yeah, Kevin Windham said, yeah, go ahead. Um, so Cole Seeley retired this year. And a couple of people were up for a new, they wanted to get some new career numbers. Uh, so Justin Cooper asked Cole Seeley if he could have the 14, if he could run it. And Cole Seeley's like, yeah, yeah, you can have the 14, no problem. And uh, neither of those guys really knew that, uh, well, Justin Cooper didn't automatically have the rights to pick that number, almost cased it. Uh, Dylan Ferrandez had first choice because he won the championship uh, last year over AC, as we know. So he picked the number 14. He went from 34 to 14. 
And then Cole Seeley was like, you know, that's kind of kind of lame that, whoa, that guy just ate it. Kind of lame that somebody took the number when he had promised, quote unquote. Oh, uh, this is, I'm going over. I'm going over. Oh, my God. Didn't hit the netting, though. Now uh, that he had promised, promised Justin Cooper the number. Uh, so what do you guys think? I think Dylan Ferrandez had every right to choose that number. He run the championship. Uh, Justin Cooper did not. He didn't have really any right to it other than asking Cole Seeley for it. And Cole Seeley is retired. He doesn't have any, uh, any right to that number, uh, you know, anymore. He gave it up because he retired. Uh, so, I don't know. What are you guys' feelings on that? Let me know in the comments. Okay, we are up to six. We have so much time left, unless the leader has checked out on us. Yeah, he's... Somebody's checking out up there. I don't know who it is. Who was it? Harrison got the whole shot, I believe, but I can't I can't tell who's who is in first right now. Is this AC? Nope, Savachi. So where is Savachi going next year? I haven't seen anything lately. If you guys know anything, let me know. I mean it seems like people are thinking probably JGR is the last good team that he might be able to get on uh i don't know uh i mean they have chad reed and hill right now right or i don't even know if that's a done deal with chad reed uh, and hill just he kind of just sucked last year i don't know what's going on with him kind of wasting that ride and oh was pike is pike gonna be bad oh ooh. i think pike's still having problems uh, i know he's been riding and stuff uh this past summer but i think he's still having problems with his eye and his vision so really not ideal for him uh so i don't know if he's even going to be back this year which uh, uh, uh oh uh oh Woo. so yeah let me know i think savachi i think he probably will end up there i thought maybe he had a chance a chance at at Honda, but it, I guess what they're saying is that Honda wanted just a one-year rider, so that's why they picked up Brayton, uh, because Chase Sexton is coming in uh, next year, in 2020, onto the 450s, and then he will be partnering Ken Roxon most likely, right? But anyway, Savachi though, I think he did a good job last year, uh, best rookie. Uh, he was just a placeholder, he said, for, you know, everybody kind of knew Cian Cirillo was coming up, and Kawasaki has invested so much money in AC. There was no way AC, you know, some people are speculating, oh, he's going to go to Honda, you know, be with uh, partners with K-Rock, but no. I mean, I'm a Kawasaki guy. You know, I rode Kawasaki's all my life, and I... I really hate it when a Kawasaki rider leaves. <laughs> like, I'm kind of peeved at Ryan Villapoto. I'm glad he he saw his career on uh, Kawasaki, but now he's, he's like an ambassador for Yamaha. Um, you know, I guess he used to ride Yamahas when he was younger, but, you know, pretty much his whole professional career, he has been with uh, Kawasaki. Ooh, Plessinger, he is... He is my rival for the points lead. Oh, he's got oh, two laps. I don't know if I can catch him. He is... Uh, man, there... Yeah, he is just about two straightaways ahead of us. Okay, we'll see what we can do. I do not think we can do it. I think he's actually going to lap somebody also. Where is Plessinger? Yeah, he is... He is very far ahead. Damn, we're going to lose points in the championship. Is that him right there? Yep, I think so. Yeah, he is still too far ahead. Last lap. Okay, we're going to lose some points, but man, good thing. 
So a 25 second head start. Eh, it's still doable, I think. Oh no. Get back on the track. And yeah, okay. The wind is gone. And here comes Starling. I think second place is safe though. Oh, that was the best I did in those whoops. Oh man, he already crossed the finish line. 25 seconds, very tough. Man, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. A uh, long time it's been since playing this. Ooh, needed a break though, needed a break. Had to play something else uh, besides MSGP 2019. Uh, I need to get back to some other games too. Uh, man, all right, let's see. 15 seconds behind, but I had a, had a few crashes, so I, I still think it was doable with the 25 second head start. Uh, they were pretty easy at this track. All right, guys, that was a fun one back into Supercross 2. Man, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you on the next one.